This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise to Allah, Allah who is the maintainer of this world, who is the provider of all these worlds. Now my dear brothers and sisters, these two components in Tawfiq are equally important. In the world, since centuries, nearly every person believed that God had created us. Even if you ask people who believe in multiple gods, that who had created you, who had created the universe, he will use the word God or Allah or Bhagwan or Ishwar, but that person would believe that it is one God. But then when it comes to running this universe, Allah being the provider, Billions of people have issues with it. They start associating other gods with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you need money, you go to some other god. When you need help, you are not calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but somebody else. And so on and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has explained this thoroughly. That don't go to anyone. I am the one who has created you and I am the one who is providing you. So when it comes to cleansing your heart, the most important thing for us to visit is this belief in talking La ilaha illallah. Cleanse your heart from any kind of shit. Make sure that you are not believing in any other power but the power of Allah. And the second thing is, cleanse your heart about any kind of kufr with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is, he was Khatimun Nabiji. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the last prophet. And he is the final prophet. His life is the best life. His example is the best example. You know, his saints are the last saints in the world. Nobody can say anything, nobody can teach anything better than what our Prophet has said and, and what he has taught. So, to refresh this belief, right, that is cleansing your heart. <coughs> So when it comes to belief, talking and risalat, we must, brothers and sisters, have no doubt about our beliefs. So when it comes to Qatafla, Haman, Tazakka, that that person is successful who had cleansed his heart, it means that first start with your belief. And after that comes cleansing your heart about your belief that you have towards others. And that is to believe that everybody is better than me. When it comes to character, when it comes to uh, doing good deeds, we must believe that every Muslim is better believer than what I am. Because unless and, and until you have this firm yaqeen and belief, you are, if you think that the person who is sitting on my right and on, and on my left, both of them are big sinners, they are very bad Muslims. But Alhamdulillah, I am better than them. Brother, this is one of the most polluting things that, that anybody can keep in his or her heart. But the thing is that you must believe that the person on the cinema right and my left, they are better and more practicing Muslim than what I am. Then your heart is clean. Then your heart is clean. Because humility, tawadu, humility cleanses your heart. Tarakabu, pride, then I am a better Muslim. That would corrupt your heart. 
So after talking, after the belief, the next most important thing is that we need to cleanse our heart about the belief that we have towards others. Towards others. Then your heart will be clean. And then may show that in your heart you don't have hate towards others. You know, in, in your heart you have love towards everyone. Because remember, Islam is based on love. Understand that, my dear brothers and sisters. Islam is not based on hate. If you look into Quran, there is no mention of hate. It is all love towards people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told us that if you want to be a true Muslim, then look into the example set by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Put Allah And when you see the example of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa you will find that he is full of what? Love. He does not have any hate. I mean, every year of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you study, Rasulullah lived for how many years with us as, as, as a prophet? Six years. Yes, as a prophet. 23. Every year of Rasulullah is documented. By the way, one point to think, and this is a very important point for brothers and sisters to think and to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is that only our Rasulullah Prophet Muhammad sallallahu life is such that every year of his life is documented in the books of history. Meaning all 23 years as prophet, what he did, and for example in the year 43, right? When the first one came in the Bismillah of the Quran. From that time onward, till Rasulullah closed his eyes and left this world. These 23 years of life of Rasulullah is very well documented. So when you read the biography which we call Sea of the Peace you will find out every year of Rasulullah is well documented. And this distinction belongs to only our Rasulullah. No human being on this earth, many prophets have come, many leaders have come. But their life has not been documented from, <coughs> from their birth till their death. For example, brother, especially any youngster who is sitting here, how long did Jesus live on this earth? You tell me. Yes. Jesus lived for 33 years. The first 30 years of, us, of Jesus Christ's life, nobody knows. Nobody knows. There are one or two or three some uh, vague incidents about his life that are mentioned. Yes, the last three years of Christ's life are mentioned. But those also are mentioned, right? Not in, in, in detail, but only his good quality of forgiving people is mentioned. How Isa Islam used to eat, how he used to sleep, or how he used to deal with people, that is not mentioned. But his quality of forgiveness, that is mentioned. That's it. But the first 30 years of Isa Islam life, you don't find it. Allah Allah Sulaimaniya, for example, mentioned the story of his birth. Right? After that, Allah stopped. History books are silent. All we come to know about his life is when he had been the age of 31. Same thing with, with Musa al We know about him. But from here and there. 
you will not find a book that talks about Siyatul Nabi or Musa al Or you will not find a book in the world that is written about any prophet. Like you will find books written on Siyatul Nabi so my dear brother and sister, when we look into the life of Rasulullah we find out that every year Rasulullah is teaching us love towards people, not hatred. So if we want to cleanse our heart, we need to learn the sifa quality of loving people. And don't just love your children and family members only or your friends only. But love everyone and love those people who hate you. Because Rasulullah extended his love towards people who hated him. And as I said, all 20 years of his life are a testament of Rasulullah's love towards people. So look, <coughs> Fatih Makkah. The victory of Makkah, a golden opportunity for Rasulullah to take revenge for all these people who have given hard time to Rasulullah for 13 years that he lived in Makkah. 13 years he lived in Makkah. And these people, they really gave, gave hard time to Rasulullah. Rasulullah loved Makkah in the city of his birth, where he lived for, for, for 53 years. He loved Makkah so much that when he was Migrated in the middle of the night to Abu Bakr. When he was leaving Makkah, in that night, Abu Bakr says that Rasulullah, when we step out of the city, he turned around. And he faced the city, Makkah. And he said, Wallahi inni lawit. Wallahi, you are the most beloved. Ahabbul biladi ilayya. The most beloved city to me. If my form would not have forced me to leave you, I would have never left you. So much love to the Makkah. Then from the Makkah he comes back. He had opportunity to take care of, to take revenge from his enemies. Because those enemies are, have no power. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi is there with over 10,000 soldiers. And the people of Makkah had surrendered. Rasulullah would have ransacked their, their homes, could have slaughtered them, right? Could have done whatever he, he would have thought of doing. Here is the difference between a political leader and a prophet of Allah. You know, prophets come to set the example of piety, of noble character. So Rasulullah enters into Makkah and said, that I am saying what my, my brother Yusuf al Islam has said, and that is, La Takhti Bale Kumayyam I am not going to take revenge from anyone. All of you are followers. All of you are followers. This was the quality of love for Rasulullah. Now, why would you forgive somebody who had given you so much hardship that he forced you to leave your home, leave your, leave your city? Only because we have love towards people. So this means that al aflah man tazakka, only those people are successful who have cleansed their heart, means that you cannot cleanse your heart if you do not have the quality of love. Hatred will pollute your heart. For example, you pray salah, if you have love towards people, your salah will be accepted. If you are praying Juma Salah, you have hatred towards people. Your Salah will not be accepted. Your Salah is just because you have hatred. And my brother, remember, in order for your Salah to be accepted by Allah, you have to really work hard on your Salah acceptance when you are not praying Salah. When you are outside Salah. Make sure that you have those good qualities that Allah wants you to have. And among them is love towards people. And this, <coughs> the, this goes on and on. But this ayah of Allah Hamad Bazaka, 
is very important for you to make you understand that Allah is telling us that only those people are going to be successful who have a clean heart. Clean heart. Otherwise, you will not be successful in the last year. Otherwise, your acts of worship in this world is nothing but waste of time. Islam is in, is in your heart. They want one that Rasulullah said, Al Taqwa Ham. Rasulullah said, Piety is in your heart. Piety is not in your clothes. <laughs> Piety is in your heart. If your heart is clean, you are a clean person. So Rasulullah pointed his finger towards his heart, Al Taqwa Ham. So the meaning that make sure that your heart is clean. Then the next time. And if you have a clean heart, then you will remember Allah day and day in, day out. He will remember his love day in, day out. And Fasallah. And a natural reaction to zikr is that you want to pray salah. Fasallah means that he gets up and starts praying salah. Meaning, when you have the strong bond of love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever you think about Allah, you will start praying salah. And the first salah, of course, you have to pray salah. No, we have no option, we have to pray. But here, salah means nothing salah. That the more love you have for Allah, the more you will pray. Nobody has to tell you to pray. You will pray. Because you do love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now my dear brothers and sisters, after explaining this, look at this, these two ayahs. Pay attention to that one. Bal tuktiruna hayata dunya. Allah said, but, but, bal means but. Why does Allah say but here? Because I have explained to you how can you become successful, right? Al aflaha. So Allah is saying, but. The fact is, to tiruna hayata dunya. When it comes to picking your uh, priorities, you say, yeah, Islam is going on, but, but I still would like the life of this world. I still give breath to tiruna means ita. Ita means that when we have to choose between the life they after and this world, we say, no, I want here, everything here. I am I'm not concerned about life after death. I want everything here. My preference is this world. Yes, yeah, good. I believe in the Akra, but I really don't, uh, I'm not serious about Akra. I need everything here. So I think, but to the moon and the fire, and the number of None among us will, will say this. None among us will say that. If I want to ask you, or you will ask me, I say, no, I want. Success in the life they are. So actions tell. Actions tell what we want, what we give preference to. You know, word does not mean nothing if they are not supported by actions. So your actions are telling that this person is a man of this world. He or she does not mean much about regarding after life. So I think I explained to you everything, but at the end of the day, since you have to make the decision for yourself, but to the So the fact is that you people are giving preference to this world. Now Allah is saying how <laughs> Allah is not saying that I'm just adding that how foolish could a person be. Now Allah is telling two things about Akhirah. Well Akhirah Khay. Brothers, well after khayr and second, wa abuqa. Allah says, if you will compare the world to the life day after. Akhira, the life day after is khayr, is better in every respect. And second thing is wa abuqa. Subhanallah. Wa abuqa means is everlasting. Is everlasting. Well, this fact that Akhira is everlasting, this one point should 
being good enough for you and me to give preference to the to the life God. But you see, around us all the time, people are dying. Whatever they have, their, their money is finishing. Their life is ending. Their good health had turned into sickness. Their body full of power and strength had now become feeble, fragile. Right? And finally, of course, they died. All the glitter of life that this person enjoyed is not fading or has faded. We see this all the time. We see all the time. Big mansions, right, turn into deserted places when the inhabitants of that mansion die. And there's nobody to live. In this coronavirus, Back in India, there in one in one mansion, everybody died. Everybody died. And there was nobody to live there, deserted. And this is something that happens all the time. I mean the, for example, the house in which you grew up back home. When you were there, your mom was there, your dad was there, your uncle was there, your cousin was there, everybody was living there. Everybody was happy. Now, now what happened? You came here, your parents passed away, everybody moved out. Then how did you sold it? Or is just there abandoned? But a few people are nobody is living there. This is the nature of this world. So whatever is here will not last forever. Everything here finishes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala li ajalin musamma. Everything is running toward its end. And after life here after it's such that there is no end to it. Now what is the word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have used? In the Quran repeatedly for the life of Khalidina Fiha Abad. Here is Abba. Khalidina Fiha Abad. Then once you intend to paradise, you will live there Khalidin forever. And then Abba Abad, yes, forever and, and ever. It is not going to come to an end. So then why give preference to this life over after? Well, you know, I have a but the fact is most of you are giving preference to this world over after. Well, after is the of after. Although after is better in every respect when you compare that to this world. Well, and it is never lasting. Then I said, in the other and the of the Buddha. These are not new things that I am telling you. I have taught the same thing to the people that came before you. In the holy scriptures that I will read to Musa al-Islam, Isa al-Islam, Dawood al-Islam, and the pamphlets that Allah gave to Ibrahim al-Islam, in all these holy scriptures, I have explained the same point. I am just repeating it here for you people to read, to get benefit from my dear brothers and sisters, these ayahs are ayahs that we must think about. And these are the ayahs that should make you and me scrutinize our life. Our, do we have a clean heart, a zakka? Right? Do, uh, do we really love after? Is it that we are giving preference to, to this world for after? So these are things that, that my dear brothers and sisters, we need to think about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and amen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and amen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and amen.